so there was a quote and it said I hate this town okay and it isn't too fond of me and yes I hate the town too and I was ready to leave and come back to civilization so that it made me feel very trapped in that town so there were some unfortunate lowlights. Now there were huge transitional errors, just too much character swapping and too many characters to swap between in my opinion. That's just my thought. That's how I felt as I was reading it. I just, I just, I just couldn't like that. I was, it, it was always who's talking now and what was I supposed to remember about them so there were some also incorrect, incorrect tenses used. I couldn't tell if the author was doing this on purpose. Way too many of these types of situations uh, that were happening here. For example, he'd gotten used to them fast people. Should be those. And if they seen him standing, well, see or saw is the past tense of the verb see and usually comes immediately after nouns and pronouns. Now, seen is the past participle of the verb see. Generally, seen is used alongside have, has, had, was, were in a sentence to make compound verbs. So incomplete run-on sentences, which made it difficult to maintain a steady flow. An example of that would be on page 45. Knew instantly where she'd gone, period. The butcher said, the butcher she used to brag about. So it really should be comma, comma, to the butcher. So there were also some punctuation errors present. You may see this word, you may see this word period, next sentence beginning with a coordinating conjunction and that is not incorrect. Just not advice for the purpose of healthy syntax. You can do that, but you know, you definitely want that syntax to be constant and complete. So there were also, speaking of constant, there were constant fragments as well. Now the, the author did transition into new characters sporadically. There's not really a backstory. And that's something that I wanted as I was trans transitioning, flip-flopping between these characters. I wanted a backstory. Now you do learn about who they are and who they, their relationship to the plot. You learn about that along the way. Now. Fox Poss word was used on page 103. I think out of place for the quote unquote intelligent sheriff to say it. Now it's like using the word aroma when there's nothing to smell. Okay, Fox Poss actually means an embarrassing or a tactless act or a mark in a social situation. Well, what was the tactless act? So in this context, it was to denote the fight between Dutch and Murdoch. And this was a fight, a scuffle, a battle, not anything else. So my overall opinion of the plot, it was kind of drab. My interest was hard to be kept. It's not a suspenseful murder mystery, if you will, but it had very nice elements that kept the story moving along. And my thought is that there could have been a bit more action going on for Dutch because he was basically a free man the entire time. No one was really remotely close to finding him. And so we were more so trailing his guilt and his memories. So I wanted, I, I like when Dutch attacked, uh, when Murdoch attacked him, you know, it's like someone's actually coming after him at this point in time. And so he needs to answer for, for, for what happened. So um, that was, uh, that was more or less also how I felt it was strongly attributed to the amount of characters being swapped which made it difficult to connect with anyone long enough to care about them. I still loved the ending. It was lots of action. It was lots it, lots of near death and close calls like a scene out of the Expendables. It was an action-packed ending and then it kind of meddled down and it didn't linger too long on what happened post-climax and, and we moved it along with the noble drop-off of the characters so kudos there. I uh, did locate some discrepancies. Now, Dinkus, I assume, meant cat. No, it wasn't specified, um, and it did fail that Google, that Google search. So I, I'm not really sure what that was. Now, also, Tommy Lee Jones and Harry Connick Jr.'s name was mentioned. Now, the question is, 
do you need permission to use real names in books so yes especially if you are using their real name and the book is a true story so this is not the case which hopefully this murder mystery was fiction however if you are changing their name but they will be identifiable by the story it's still best practice to get the owner of the name's permission now notice i said it's best practice but it's not required it is ultimately going to depend on the person but the rule of thumb is to remember that anyone can sue for any reason whether they win is different now the same applies for inside edition that was mentioned on page 138 now my recommendation would be to just come up with a different name for each of these and what's mo most important to remember is that the reader will not react to the name being used so much as the person whom the name belongs and this is why movies deviate from using names of actual persons or places unless via paid product placement now also the word joggling was mentioned um, and used out of context it was on page 42 to refer to the motion of a pickup truck now juggling is a competitive sport that combines juggling with jogging and people who joggle are called jog alerts and also on page 71 i would say why was the main character riding on a tricycle now that i have to laugh about that because that that threw me and so I was looking for tricycles for adults, okay? I don't ride the three-wheeled three, uh, uh, motorcycle, okay? And I didn't know <laughs> that that is actually symbolic for a three-wheeled uh, motorcycle. And I was like, you know, Jimmy, why do you... <laughs> Why is the main character riding a tricycle? But um, I did have to get the word of mouth on what that actually is. So um, good, good job on actually using some symbolism uh, there with the tricycle. Uh, so my final judgments is, was I confused at any point while reading? Absolutely. Did I care about the characters? I definitely liked Charlie. And did it have a compelling plot? Yes. And was the dialogue believable? Yes. Is there any questionable profane graphic content? Yes to all of those. And would I, who would I recommend this book to? People with a twisted sense of curiosity, people into murder mysteries or mysteries altogether. Now for your book clubs and comments down below if you so choose to check it out. Did the characters seem believable to you? Did they remind you of someone or anyone? And did the book's pace seem too fast too slow or just right and if you're wondering why i critique check out my book secrets of the shadowed heart 74 tears on file and secrets of the shadow souls they can be found on our online self-published bookstore amazon.com purchase the books read them and make your very own critique and please be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you learned anything today and until next time i'll see you in the next video bye